Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. Okay, so last year, you know, 3D was one of the huge breakout technologies. You know, Avatar was out, it was a huge success. Uh, the Panasonic 3D TV won the best, uh, uh, best new product at CES. And uh, the soccer's been broadcast in 3D by ESPN, and they're going to launch a network. So it's been an awesome accomplishment. So if you want to get into 3D photography, though, just as a as, as just a person, what do you you know how do you do it? How are you going to get into it? There's a professional route, which is basically you could buy a $600 camera. This is the um, the Fuji uh, Fine Picks, and you know an 80 cent pair of funky glasses. Or you could go a DIY, DIY route, you know, and that's what I want to talk about tonight, where you have an 80 cent pair of glasses, a free digital camera, a digital camera that you already own. And uh, processing and a processing script to do all the uh, all the image work. So before talking about that script, just to talk a little bit about how um, all this 3D stuff works, it's based on a principle called stereoscopy. And the idea of stereoscopy is that you have um, two separate views um, that are slightly offset of the same image. And most of us are familiar with it because that's how our eyes work. You know, they're two. You're looking at a essentially 2D things, but your brain is reassembling that information into a 3D image based on the position, relative position of the subject against the background. So there are various cues that you've used and are, are using um, to create a 3D image. So people have known about this a long time. This uh, image at the top is the Victorian avatar. This was uh, you know, a device that uh, they used to make in the Victorian era where you had um, a card that had two pictures on it. You stuck it at the end of the device and you looked through it and it became a, you know, a 3D picture. Um, at the bottom is a Viewmaster. You know, and some of you may remember this is a, a wheel of, um, of images. You stuck it in this binocular-like thing, and you could you could click through and see, you know, basically pictures of um, of Disneyland. But um, you know, anaglyphic uh, 3D photography is what uh, we're mostly familiar with, and that is the process where you take two images. So you have this stereoscopic pair. Um, one is um, tinted red, and one is tinted blue. Then they're combined into a single image, and um, when you look at it through the 3D glasses, that gives you this perception of depth because of those cues um, are, are causing you to reassemble that as a 3D image in your mind. So basically there's three steps then if you want to do 3D photography as a D, through, a DIY, through, um, through DIY. Basically you need to create your stereo pair, then you need to apply some filters, you need the red and the blue, and then you need to be able to align the subject so that it becomes a, a coherent image rather than two sort of separate things. So taking the 3D, um, the stereoscopic pair is actually pretty simple. With your digital camera, all you do is first you take one picture of your subject, and then you move your camera slowly over to the other eye, and you take another picture. So that gives you the stereo pair. And then you take that and uh, export it out onto uh, just a plain PNG, PNG file or JPEG. These are some pictures that I took in, uh, in Harvard Square, uh, the Harvard Square T-Station. You export them, um, basically make sure that they're both the same size and the same uh, um, resolution. Then you put them into this processing script. And what the processing script is going to do is apply some, uh, some matrix operations, and basically filters are matrix operations. So uh, what you want to do is, against each of the red, green, and blue components within um, each pixel in the image, first um, on the left side, you want to remove the, um, the red. So you strip out the red and just leave the green and blue. That gives it kind of a... Uh, the greenish blue tinted image. And then in the left, um, I'm sorry, and then <clears throat> in the right image, you just want to have the red, right? So you have a red image and a, uh, the blue image. And then you need to fuse those together. So that's just a matrix, uh, a matrix addition. So once you do that, you get an image that's going to um, come up here in a second. I'm starting to know that. Um, <laughs> there we go. It's going to look a little bit like uh, an overexposed picture taken by a drunk person. So. <laughs> That gets into this concept of alignment, right? So it's not enough just to fuse the images. You have to then take them and you have to merge them by subject so that they begin to form a coherent um, picture in your, in your mind. And this is actually supposed to be an auto-started video of the uh, screencast, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to like it's, uh, like it's, it's starting here. But basically what, what you would see is you're able to sort of, using the script, slide those images around so that they begin to overlap. And as you can see, this would be the final result um, it's got a, that kind of characteristic, it's clear in the front, it's a little bit fuzzy in the back, everything has this sort of weird red and blue halo around it. 
Um, but if you were to look at that through a pair of funky 3D glasses, it would, it would appear 3D. And I have to admit, I had a secret plan, which was to give everybody 3D glasses and get a picture exactly like this of uh, boot camp. But unfortunately, you know, it, didn't, it didn't quite work out that way. You know, but I'm hoping, uh, I've got a couple pairs, if anybody's interested in seeing how these look, um, you know, just, just come find me. And if you want to download the code and get the images and, and learn more about this, uh, you can go to answers.arata.com slash tag slash j4f. So thanks and have fun. Thank you.